key trends that we are observing right now in the transformation and for the outlook of the global energy industry uh, are featured here in the colored boxes. And I've put renewable in brackets because renewables and energy can no longer really be considered in two different silos. Renewables are integral to the future power system. Uh, and all of these themes are a result in many ways of what renewables are doing. So firstly, let's have a look at declining costs. We are in a place now where wind and solar are the cheapest forms of bulk generation in almost every major energy market around the world. And these two charts here show you the two biggest and most important power systems, the United States and China. And in those countries this year, uh, we are confident in saying that the cheapest form of new electrons is, a new is building a new wind farm or a new PV plant. Coal is no longer the, ki the king of cheap energy. It has been dethroned by renewables. And the reduction in renewable costs also means that at some point in the future, and by our current numbers that will be in the mid to late 2020s, building new renewables will become cheaper than operating an existing coal or gas plant, which means that it's cheaper to build a new solar farm than it is to shovel coal into an existing coal-fired power station or pump gas into an existing combined cycle gas turbine. Batteries are also fast becoming the cheapest forms of flexibility. And this chart here shows you the numbers we have for the levelized cost of energy supplied by a battery for different hours of storage. A small battery of one hour storage is already a cheaper source of flexibility than building new coal. And as storage costs come down through time, we expect longer and longer durations to also become the cheapest option. If you were to charge those batteries from a new, v new PV plant, the economics change slightly, but not by a lot. And the tipping points are well upon us. The next key trend is digitalization. And we see that there's new technology that's offering a whole suite of smart solutions to the power system. From the proliferation of sensors, the cheap and, and uh, massively upscaled capabilities of big data and the capabilities of machine learning and artificial intelligence to make sense of that data mean that we're now seeing applications of the Internet of Things in the power system, from virtual power plants to distributed energy resource management systems. The grid is getting smarter finally, and that's enabling us to run it in a smarter and more efficient way. The grid is also becoming increasingly decentralized. And that's a trend that we know a lot of in Australia, but it's something that is playing out at various speeds and at various stages in other power systems around the world. And this is our forecast to 2050 of the amount of capacity that will sit behind the meter in various major markets. And you can see that almost every country gets between 10 and 50% distributed by their 2030s.